wanted to say is, um, like, have, has, has your mother or father ever just looked at you and didn't say anything, and you could be across the room, and they just looked at you, and you knew what, what to do, whether to sit down or, or whether to shut your mouth. You knew exactly what the look was. I wish, and, and, and I'm saying that because I wish Frederick Douglass could look at Barack Obama after the eight years of, of, of being the president of the free world. And I just wish that Frederick Douglass could stand in his clothes, you know, those clothes that they show him in, and he looked like he's just always doing battle. You know, when he was dressed, he just looked like he was just ready. And I just wish he could just give Barack Obama that look of, and, and I'm not sure what the look would be, but but I could I could imagine it could be a look of, you know, just 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 look what you know just look what you you know just what you didn't do or what you didn't say. And I know a lot of people say, well, he couldn't have done this, he couldn't have done this. And, and like I tell my wife, I just wish he could have just said more about the plight of what's going on. With the, you know, just with the brown people in this community, in, in the community of the United States. You know, I just wish he could have just said something about, you know, we could have been uplifted somehow, just, you know, just somehow with, with his words. And now he's, now he's back around, and he looks like he's getting back into um, helping raise money for the Democrats, and he's back in that, you know, I just, I, I just don't understand, I just don't understand that man, but he is who he is. And I was just thinking that after his office was over, I was hoping that he would pick up a, a, a hammer and, and, and a toolbox, you know, and maybe go to the communities and help build them that way, almost like a Jimmy Carter did. But I, and I just want to say this before, before I get off. I want to give a shout out to, to the North Korean president. And, and I'm really serious about this, Kim Jong Un, for standing his ground. Because I noticed throughout my years, and I'm 58 years old, Walter, Throughout my years, I've seen America go around and pick on brown people, Vietnam, Korea. I mean, you can, you can name them on and on, and, and we still got, got, got our butts licked a little bit, but we seem to pick on people who we think that can't fight back. And, and, and I just want to say, you know, we don't hear all the rhetoric from Nikki Haley and from Trump and all of them. The guy, the guy might be nuts, and he got black people calling him crazy. And the man is just standing his ground for his country, and we can't say how he treats his people in his country because we we always point his finger at how Castro treated his people. Castro held on to his eyes. See, I got a different way of looking at Castro, you know. And I, and I don't know the man. I don't know. I, I don't know all the things. But I do know when I go to the islands and when I take my wife on these island vacations in the Bahamas and everywhere, the, the, the white the white people own him. The British the British rule or the European rules, they, they own them. And, and, you know, Haiti, you know, you see the condition of Haiti, not unless you go on the other side of the island, and, and you see how Cuba is, and, you know, it was mainly black, and I commend that man for holding on to that island, and didn't want those people to come in and take over his island. And now look how they're treating him now. He's, you know, but, but anyway, I just, I just wanted to say that, and, and, and man, I just appreciate you guys um, talking and, and, giving, and giving us an opportunity to talk but I do, like I say, I appreciate that guy over there in North Korea standing his ground. Yes, and I yes. hope nothing comes of it. But I just, I just, I just, I'm proud of him for just standing up because it reminds me of a bully. Yeah, I, I, I identify a lot with what you're saying. Uh, uh, was something that we need to understand about North Korea. They lost a third of the population last time the United States invaded. Now, in in uh, during uh, uh, George Bush, the son, the North Koreans destroyed their own nuclear cooling tower and nuclear laboratories. They destroyed them themselves to prove to the world and to show the United States that they did not want war, they did not want nuclear weapons in the peninsula. Uh, George Bush was supposed to uh, only say words. His, his only job was to say, and he had promised to do it, that they would not invade North Korea. That's all they wanted, just public, publicly uh, uh, the United States saying, we will not invade you. That's all they were asking for. Okay. George Bush reneged on a promise not, uh, to, to just say publicly that. So then they say, hey, we have to protect ourselves. We're a small country. We, we're a tiny country. We lost millions of people. Close to three million people they lost the last time the United States invaded. They have to protect themselves, you know? So that, that is, the, you know, that, that I think uh, uh, as it relates to North Korea. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I'm glad you brought up uh, Cuba. 
in Cuba and Venezuela. Yes, definitely what they're saying is above all, above uh, so-called progress, above all the thing, we are going to rule our own land. You know, right. nobody's going to rule over us. We're going to ru rule our own land. We may make mistakes, but we are going to be, we're going to make our own mistakes. We're going to be sovereign. That's what, that's what they're saying. Right, and, and I see that and I understand that. And, and it seems like to us, when people of color stand up and want to do something for themselves, we don't help them. And, and, and the thing with Kaepernick and all that's going on now, could you imagine if everybody got together, almost like when they do the cancer drives, when they do the sickle cell immediate drive, when they do the leukemia get together? Could you imagine if the, uh, if the country got together on days like that and said, we're not going to stand for none of this racism? And Kaepernick, we see what you, we see. What you see. And, and, and if I was Kaepernick, I wouldn't play for anybody ever again. I'll sit back and do what I'm going to do. And, and, and that, that's just me, though. But, but I, I enjoy what's, what's going on. He would be and, far more effective right now if he did that. Yeah, because he can make a, he can make a, a real difference if he really wanted to. I I personally don't think he needs to play football anymore. I think he, well, it's beyond him right now. I wouldn't play again, and you know, and like I say, I wish everybody would come together. And when they say black men need to stick together more, I mean, it's, we can't keep beating each other up, man. We've been so conditioned to be separated. And, and, and one thing I wanted to say about you guys with the Democrat and the Republican, if, if you can do some research, and, and maybe you even know, Walter, that Black Wall Street, when we had our own thing, when we were doing our own thing and it was very successful, I can't believe that there was Democrats and Republicans amongst our people then um, talking the way we talk now or, or divided the way we are divided now. And, 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 and let me just say this, before they invaded Africa, Sure that we were sectioned off, and I believe there were certain sections, but we were like family, and, and they, they divided us. You know, Democrats and Republican Africans in these huts, and we're taking care of each other and learning, and there was none of that. Maybe conflict, of course. There's, a, there's, that, there's that everywhere. But with, with all this division, I've, I've never heard of it. It's, and it's splitting families up. I was listening to you guys earlier, and I heard, I heard a person say she couldn't go to her wedding or something, and... I, I, and, and I'm sure she's just one, just one person amongst, you know, a, 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 a lot of people were just Democrat and Republicans, and now they got black people. I'm 58 years old. We weren't talking about that Democrat and Republicans when in the 60s from the time I can remember, like that in the 68. Yeah, now, brother man, we were all we had, we were all we needed. Exactly. Listen, we, we we appreciate your we appreciate your words, man. But we got a bunch of calls here, man. We got we got to be respectful of the time and of the people that are calling in. Okay, man. Thank you so much for calling in, and please call again. All right, brother. Peace. All right, now. Next we have Connie Burton on the phone from Tampa. Connie Burton, what's happening, sister? Uh -oh. Good morning. I'll call to the people. All right, now. Uh, I don't know who I would say which party was responsible for slavery. I can tell you who the beneficiary of the broken promises coming out of the emancipation, uh, the removal of federal troops that took us back into black code, then followed up by Jim Crow. I don't know what party that was, but I know the people that suffered. And so even if we fast forward now, and if I say, you know, as a registered Democrat, I couldn't understand why Bill Clinton would enforce a one-strike policy and still put women of their democratic rights to build up a police inside of our community under his administration. So I'm looking at all of this stuff, like Dr. King said, an unhealed sore that is cushioned with pus. And now we're looking at it and we're watching a bunch of spectators, whether they be Democrats or Republicans, that can see atrocities are happening to people and they're hoping that they can get past it and then they get back to what they consider a normalcy. And that normalcy would be a passive peace until people can get their political party back in office. So black folk ain't nothing. They were losing I'm sorry. <laughs> so African people have been pawned. And hopefully, uh, now that we can kind of like recognize some of this stuff that irregardless of political party, economically we stripped, we don't have anything. 
We continue to see the assault on black men, black women, juveniles inside of a prison system, even when on the local level we got a Democrat that's head of the state attorney's office. So I, I think we need to just come real. Ain't no party gonna save us. Ain't no Democratic or Republican party gonna save black people because we have been used to their advantage to push the ball for them. And we have to say for our survival and for the next generation of African children, we got to be self-reliant. And maybe if we could just grow some balls put them inside of the black community, black women and men, and say we want power, then we could get some respect from the political parties of both Democrats and Republicans. Thank you so much.